The reason why I got into Harvard is because of this. But first, a disclaimer. Number one is awards. Schools definitely recognize certain awards, and Harvard is not an exception. For instance, I did the International Science and Engineering Fair in high school and won a top international award. There are certain competitions and awards that admissions officers will be familiar with just because of how many applications they have to read on a daily basis. Number two is supplemental files. If you submit a supplemental file, sometimes it's gonna seem like, does this school even care? Are they even going to read the supplemental file? But from my experience, it seems like schools do indeed care about supplemental files, at least certain ones of them that I did. I submitted research papers through Harvard's portal and other schools' portals. It was very interesting to realize that schools actually appoint faculty advisors to read student research papers and then provide an input to the admissions committee on how well this paper was, or I guess how good it was. It's impossible to know what exactly they say, but it is interesting to know that you actually have scientists read those papers. It's not just admissions officers looking at them. Whether it's a CD of your music and online recording of you playing the violin, schools will look at supplemental information and oftentimes they'll have a portal where you can submit this additional information. I would highly recommend you look into it if you have an exceptional talent or something to share. Number three, the order of things matters a surprising amount. For me, I noticed that the order of the activities I put on my common application mattered a lot. Naturally, when reviewers are looking at your Common App, they're going to read the activities and honors and whatnot from top to bottom. And so you wanna make sure you prioritize the things you care the most about near the top. So that's the first thing that schools see. For me, my research activities were at the top. That was the thing I was most passionate about. I spent the most time doing it. And honestly, it was just the most fun. You can read more about the specific activities that I put on my activity section in this video right here. In fact, I've even given the written descriptions of what I put and there are surprising ways to make the descriptions of your written activities more impactful by using certain types of language. And so I'd highly recommend you check out this video. Number four, is recommendations. It turns out that every recommendation letter you submit is evaluated to some extent. This includes not just teacher and counselor recommendation letters, but also supplemental recommendation letters. I, for instance, submitted two supplemental recommendation letters to Harvard, which were my research professors. But an interesting conundrum that students run into when they're trying to decide which teachers or which professors to ask for a recommendation letter is should I go for the one that is more prestigious or should I choose one that perhaps knows me better? And that's a difficult decision to make. However, based on my experience and the overall anecdotes that I have to share here, I would say you should go for someone that knows you better. And this aligns with the advice we see online, for instance, from admissions officers blogs from MIT. Having someone who knows you personally, who can write about personal one-on-one -on -one experiences or recall memories can make a big difference in your application. Number five is the X factor. Let's get away from all this generic stuff you already know about rec letters, right? Sometimes there's gonna be students who put really unique things on their application. For instance, expert pancake chef. And it's a gamble, but after all, schools and admissions officers will notice things that are unique amongst other students and things within your own profile that seem, hey, this is kind of interesting. For me personally, I noticed that this was actually my YouTube channel, which was super interesting. I thought it would be, you know, maybe the fact that I did speech and debate four years, or maybe they would focus a little bit more on my nonprofit organization, all the time I spent on that. But instead, it did seem like my unique activity of having a YouTube channel, in particular, the number 100,000 subscribers, triggered some sort of thought. It's impossible to know if this helped me or not, or how much this type of unique activity could help you. But at the end of the day, I feel like 
If you have something that's core to your personality, you spend a lot of time on it. For instance, my common application, I actually talked about finding my voice through avenues such as my YouTube channel. And so I feel like featuring those authentic personal experiences is really important in whatever you do. And that's what makes you unique. So I'd highly recommend you put those on there. Number six is deferrals. And so this didn't happen to me personally. I was admitted into the colleges I applied to upfront. However, I do know some students who applied early decision or just got deferred or waitlisted in general. And one student in particular submitted multiple updates to the school, expressing how much they wanted to go to the school and all the things they've been doing ever since. And so one thing in their admissions file that they noted was very interesting, that this student actually wanted to go to the school so bad that it's still their number one choice and whatnot. So I would highly recommend if you get deferred from a school, continue to update the school on what you're doing. It definitely can't hurt you. And it could even be a strong positive like it was for this student, where the school notices that you're very interested in them and that you would love to be a part of the community. Number seven is interviews. Now, I think interviews don't really make or break your application. That's what I realized from my experiences and admissions notes and whatever. And I think that's what other admissions officers have talked about on their blogs and podcasts and things like that. However, of course, the interview can help you. It does have an impact on how schools will view your personality and what type of person you're like. I wouldn't stress on it, but just know that interviews do get scored. This is something that's not just unique to me. This is something that's well known, especially for a school like Harvard. They do evaluate this to some extent and do have the interviewer write comments and assign you scores, which is super interesting. Number eight is personal information. All information, whether it's your siblings or your parents' colleges, or even that random thing on the Common App that asked you what is the most likely activity that you'll participate now that you're going to college, and you don't really feel like it weighs or matters that much, but it ends up in your admissions file. And that's super interesting that even the things that you think are just kind of supplementary information do in fact get reflected to some extent. It's impossible to once again know if this actually makes a difference. Our schools discussing this, our admissions officer coming in their little meeting boards and saying, hey, this student indicated that they'd be interested in doing this in college, and so we should take them for this reason. Hey, no one knows. But it is important that you recognize that everything that you put, every minor detail may end up making its way onto the admissions file in that application that admissions officers are reading. Number nine is the secondary school report. Now, colleges like to look at high schools individually, right? You can't compare a student who got a 4.0 at school X to a student who got a 3.98 at school B if school B is 10X more rigorous, right? It's just not fair to make that comparison. And so they have schools submit a school secondary report or SSR. Now, your counselor in general will try to craft this to explain what your school is like, how many students are there, what types of courses are offered, were there any random things that happened like COVID or big issues? And of course, you probably already know this, but what's interesting here is that if you go to a school that is well known, for instance, a, a huge public school, for instance, that every year has this top valedictorian kid that's going to XYZ school, it's very interesting that colleges will actually point this out in the admissions notes and will say, hey, this is a student from XYZ school and they were a high performer. And so whether you're at a private or public school, don't worry, not only will your secondary school report try to cover some basis of what that's like, but also admissions officers might literally recognize what school you go to and evaluate you based on that. Number 10 is extracurriculars. And as college gets more and more competitive, students need more to stand out. And I think extracurriculars were probably one of the strongest reasons I got into Harvard. I had a strong extracurricular involvement with a certain spike on research. My biggest advice for ECs based on my college experiences and everything is you should really find something that you're passionate about, something that's unique, something that makes you you. In my case, this was biomedical engineering research when I was in high school, but not just, you know, volunteering at a lab or cleaning petri dishes or something like that, doing novel science research and actually having an impact through that 
And I think that's where passion sets you apart. If you really love doing something, you will put in the hundreds of hours or thousands of hours that it takes to make that thing impactful, to achieve something through that. And so that's where I think you should put your focus on. Try to identify and explore the things that you love the most and then kind of converge on those and try to get the most out of them. If you're looking for advice on how to craft an extracurricular, watch the next video on the screen. It's a very informative video that will teach you how to do that. And be sure to subscribe to get notified for future videos. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And with that, I'll see you next time.